Hey, this is Sven from Aborted, and you're listening to Into the Combine podcast. Hey, what's going on, all you metal listeners out there? This is Into the Combine. What's up, all you metalheads? This is a special episode of Into the Combine podcast. Uh, Just me today, Shoddy, still on his honeymoon. Congrats to him for his uh, recent wedding. And stay in the man, uh, who knows what he's doing. But um, special episode to get you guys by until our next full episode with the rest of the guys. Uh, I recently spoke with George Coleus of Nile. If you don't know George, yeah, he's uh, one of the best extreme metal drummers out there. One of the fastest and uh, he's just a machine he also has a solo album called invictus super good does the vocals he does the drums the guitars bass everything if you like nile you know definitely check it out quite a bit different you know with him doing the guitars and everything but um but kind of in the same realm and then uh, if you're a drummer you know check out his dvds he's got two two metal dvds i think they're called like extreme extreme drumming something like that uh, if you if you google george george Coleus, uh dvds you'll see it and then I believe he's got a book out, and just check him out on YouTube. Uh, he's awesome. I mean, if you've never watched any YouTube videos of him, you know, he does these different kind of techniques. He was the first person I ever saw to do, you know, one foot uh, blast beats and his swinging heel techniques and all that. So we talk about some of that. We talked about, you know, triggers in metal, since that's kind of a hot topic sometimes, using triggers. Is it cheating? Is it not? Uh, I had him recap the whole thing in Russia when they were on tour with Belfagor with some religious people um, basically trying to shut their show down and uh, kind of trying to entice them in, in an airport and everything to start a fight. So we touched on that and, um, you know, his whole story and everything. We're going to start things off with a track from Nile, uh, the album Annihilation of the Wicked. Uh, I believe it was the first one with George on it. Before that, they had a different drummer, and then George came on for that album and has been with them ever since. Uh, and then we're going to do, at the end of the interview, we'll play a track from his solo album Invictus. Didn't pick out the songs yet. I'm going to pick those out in a minute here before I throw this episode together. Uh, But I'll put the uh, song titles in the description if anyone's interested. So check it out. Uh, Hopefully you guys enjoy it. And um, hopefully we'll be back with a couple more episodes, you know, within a couple weeks. So we will uh, let you guys know. Thanks and stay metal.
so yeah I, I, I've been reading a lot about you and kind of what you've been up to and everything it sounds like you are extremely busy can you just kind of give her a little rundown of kind of everything you're involved with oh man um, <laughs> right now I'm not that busy you know for the first time after like uh, at least I don't know 12 years or so you know um, I, I just have a small break with the band and uh, with clinics and everything and uh, I enjoy a little bit of uh, family time uh, I just had a, a kid, you know, like a year ago. So oh, congrats! It, it was thank you, thank you. It was really important for me to get some uh, time off. Uh, we finished a European tour about uh, a month and something ago, and uh, we have a small break for another month. Then we start uh, summer slaughter in the states, mm -hmm. the, the whole tour for about a month, and then the party is starting. So I'm going to be very, very busy with clinics and um, some uh, session work, which is coming for me. There is, a, there is a really important uh, session work I'm, I'm planning with, with a jazz fusion band, hmm. which, uh, which I'm very excited. You know, this is going to be a big challenge for me. So there are some uh, things coming, uh, clinics, uh, some drum camps. We have this uh, lab music education camp in Greece with uh, Bridget Donari, Gergo Borlai and some others uh, uh, this October. Many, many events. You know, it's going to be a busy winter. For sure. Right, right. So when you're when you're off right now, you know how much uh, how much of your day do you actually spend on the drums? Um, lately, not so much. Um, I mean, I'm I'm on and off. For example, uh, I'm gonna spend, for example, like five days with family, and then you know, five days I'm gonna push it for like six hours a day. For example, hmm. I'm preparing myself for this uh, October gig with uh, this jazz fusion band, and um, I'm practicing like really different stuff you know like different songs uh, it's, it's a it's a whole new different world so I'm, I'm trying to get into it slowly and uh, understand the music very well so i'm i'm on and off but when i'm on i'm really on you know if, yeah you know what i mean <laughs> yeah yeah i mean that was one of my questions too because uh since you've been at it for a long time and the level that you're at how much time do you spend practicing you know nile material or your own material versus kind of trying to maybe learn new things or, or you know new techniques yeah. Well, the new things come, uh, they come from uh, different genres, usually, you know, I mean, I'm going to practice um, some favorite drummers in chops and, you know, like leaks and, you know, stuff like this, some gospel stuff, some jazzy stuff, you know, and then try to get them in death metal, for example. Uh, the latest new album, for example, the, the latest uh, Nile album, for mm -hmm. example, has um, some um, new ideas, which are... Uh, I'm very proud, you know, like I, I worked and, um, you know, got some different stuff in the music. And, um, yeah, that's it pretty much. Okay. Usually, I'm spending a lot of time practicing um, with music. It's, it's really important for me, you know, to, for example, if you want to practice gospel chops. Um, I, you know, usually copy some uh, other drummers, you know, try to learn some things and get them into my world, you know, and then... I will play them in my way, but then I will I will get some music and you know try to apply them in the music. Otherwise, you know, for me it's, it makes no sense. As far as Nile stuff uh, and you know this extreme stuff, I don't really practice extreme metal anymore, but I do play our songs very often. You know, so we have a set list which is pretty long, and I will get into it like three times a week, sometimes four, depends. You know, when it comes closer to the tour, just to keep it, you know, keep my chops up. You know, and get ready for the tour because uh it's um it's a very tough world you know sometimes yeah. you know different stages and you know bad sound so i try to prepare myself with uh in you know worst case scenario for example is it with extreme metal is that kind of where you started or, or where what was your beginning as far as playing goes did you kind of meld into it as you went or did you start with that uh when i started playing drums there was no extreme metal actually uh i think um it came about one or two years later with uh, some the first death metal bands, for example, like Morb Angel and later on D-Side, you know, Beachbury, you know, these bands. But uh, when I started playing drums, was, you know, there were bands like, uh, you know, Metallica were kind of like into the extreme side, you know. And of course, you know, bands like uh, thrash metal bands like Sepultura and uh, Creator, Sodom, or all, all these uh, thrash bands, which I, I grew up with, and uh, I still love. You know, I still love playing their stuff and listening to the stuff. So I would say I'm a thrash drummer. But you know, then you know, I heard more potential. I got into the music, and I'm like, okay, this is really cool. You know, this is really they they pushing their limits, and uh, you know, of course, I want to do the same for me. You know, I just wanted to be better and more extreme. So here we go. 
<laughs> right, right. Was that what you kind of practiced then too? Were you, you know, did you teach yourself by learning their songs or did you, you know, kind of learn and then just come to that at some point? Yes, uh, it was all by ear for the first 10 years. I would say nine to 10 years. There were, there were no YouTube videos back then, so it was uh, really, really tough, you know. But on the other hand, I, I feel very lucky because I had to work a little bit harder, you know, to understand their music and, you know, what the drummer does. So, yeah, that was it. That was uh, all by myself, you know. Yeah, you wouldn't but, have uh, tabs back then or anything like that or YouTube. No, or... man. No, no. That was, you know, back then was like, you know, if, if, if you started drums, you play jazz music. You know, if you, if you want to play thrash, you do it by yourself, you know? Yeah, yeah, but right. But then, you know, after, after 10 years uh, or less, I, uh, I met my, uh, my drum teacher, which is still one of my best friends and my drum mentor. His name is Yanis Stavropoulos. And that guy was, um, you know, he, he stepped it up for me. You know, he, he was like, okay, I know you like what you do and I'm going to help you to do it, you know, um, a little bit better. So he, he believed in me. He believed in what I do. And, you know, he was just, you know, pushing me to play better, but, you know, still keep my style. So that was uh, for me. And I still think is you know the best thing ever happened to me. <laughs> yeah, you know, for me, because I'm not, I'm personally, I'm not a drummer. I have a lot of drummers around me, mm -hmm. um, my brother and my friends. But um, I heard about you quite a, a while ago, and I had a, I took a pretty big interest in you just because of your YouTube videos. And the big yep. thing for me was the one foot double bass and the swivel techniques. When did all that start? <laughs> um, I think uh, actually the one foot blast started back in 92 or something, you know, when, you know, the first more potential albums came, came out, you know? So I heard the blast beat and I was like, okay, I like this, this is extreme. I want to do this, you know? So I started practicing the blast beats. Uh, back then it was all one foot because the speed was um, reasonable, you know, like 200 BPM, you know, everybody can play one foot blast with a little bit of, you know, trying. Hmm. But then the two foot blast, the, the two foot blasters came in and, you know, they started pushing the limits, you know, up to 250, 240, you know, whatever. But, um, you know, living in Greece and, you know, not watching shows like so often, you know, we, we don't get really, uh, we, we used to actually, we, we used to not see many bands live here. Uh, now, hmm. uh, thankfully it changed, you know, so many bands uh, come and play. So I had no idea about the two foot blast. So I was I was just you know hearing in the albums, and I was like, man, this is so fast, you know. So I was pushing, 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 and uh, I made my uh, one foot to go up to two fifty, two sixty, whatever, you know. Uh, so it was an accident, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. I mean, you know. Was anybody else doing it? Uh, there were. Uh, I remember at that reading, speed, and, and I remember reading interviews of Pete Sandoval, you know, talking about the one foot blast, but I had no idea what was the the cheating way he was talking about, you know, the 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 alternative way. So I was just doing what he said, you know, the, the original uh, traditional thing. And uh, then I heard about the two foot blasters, uh, you know, which is cool. It's, I mean, it kind of sounds the same, but for me, the feel is different. Plus, when you, when you can play 250 single foot blasting, you know, for example, you can also double bass at 250. Mm. That was, that's the thing, you know. So I did a little bit of extra work, which I think it paid off. As far as um, swivel thing, uh, the swivel thing, and I think it all came... Um, Although it was really early from uh, coming from Pete Sandoval and Steve Asheen from D-Side and all these legends, you know, back then, I think the guy who actually pushed me to do it was uh, Derek Roddy. Mm. And he was talking about this on, uh, on a Modern Drummer interview. So I was like, okay, what is this side-to-side -side thing, you know, he was talking about? And then he released a, a video CD back then, in, back in 2003, I think. And um, you couldn't really see his legs, but, you know, I, I, could, I could, you know, see what, what's going on. So... I try to to copy it, and um, you know that's it. People think I'm I'm the swivel inventor or something, <laughs> yeah. Which is which is very funny, and of course I do it for years, but um, I'm not. You know I, that's that goes back to '91 or something. I think from uh, Pete Sandoval. That was the first guy I saw back then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It looks cool, but uh, it's it does, not mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was very impressed by it. Especially, I don't know a whole lot about it, but um, I, you know, the other thing that comes to mind is just endurance and how you maintain on stage doing that for so long. Is that a big part of it? You know, building up the endurance for that much speed. Um, the swivel thing has nothing to do um, with uh, with speed that many people think, or you know, with endurance and everything. Uh, it has to do a little bit with balance. You know, balance, it helps me a lot, you know, because of um, the different motion. You know, one, one foot goes up and down, the other one goes up and down, but also slides a little bit. So it, it used to help me, you know, like uh, balance-wise. 
and that's it that's it you know okay. i mean nothing nothing really really important you know and um i know it's a big thing and many people th- uh, talk about this you know and um, they put my name into the their conversations but uh i tried to stop doing it until i saw some comments on youtube that like people really loved it so i'm like okay if people like it then i will keep it you know that, that was it yeah i mean i can't be more honest you know <laughs> right yeah but uh, what, um... endurance sorry to interrupt you um, oh, yeah. comes from music and that's it you know endurance and speed and everything you know it's it's all about music and this is why i say many times if you got the technique and you got uh, in a practice room and you can spend like 10 hours a day you will never be able to play extreme metal if you don't really love extreme metal you know this is a music that requires a lot of passion you know just playing with bands and you know it, it comes together that's it yeah yeah is it still something that you're pretty passionate about as far as listening to new music or finding new music or do you stick with the older stuff i do well i think both i mean bands like creator for example i i, I can't have enough you know i just i love the band you know i just listen to it and yeah. reminds me of my early years but i still love the, their new stuff so i i love the early sepultura sodom you know creator all these bands uh more potential but um i also listen to new stuff of course um not so much metal to be honest as far as mm. new stuff uh, goes, like uh, I, I prefer to discover like different styles of music that will inspire me to to do something different. You know, I mean right. it's it's but it's a really nice and uh, nice world. You know, like uh, I I love death metal. It's very it's very intensive as well. But the problem is like for example, um, a few days ago I uploaded a video of me jamming in uh, one old song from Nile, and many people are like, oh yeah, the feels are the same, blah blah blah, and you know, I mean. Technique wise, this is great, but you play the same thing. I'm like, guys, this is a song. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I can yeah. I can give you gospel chops in this song. You know, it's it's no problem. But you know, I mean, is this right for this for the song? I mean, think about it. You know. Yeah. So I I I listen to different stuff and try to to do something different. You know, for the future. You know, and every album, for example. Yeah, to try and give it a little bit different spark or flavor to mix things up. That makes sense. Yes, but uh, not for the for the crowd. For me. Mostly. I mean, sure. of course, I read the comments and, you know, some people love what I do and some people uh, maybe hate what I do, you know, but whatever I do and, you know, all the progress I want to have and everything, you know, it's all about me, you know, because th- that's, you know, when you have the fire for music, otherwise it's uh, it's a job, you know, I don't want to make it a job. Yeah. Well, I'm sure if you changed it too much, too, you'd have people telling you to go back to what you were doing before. So you probably can't win either way. Well, the thing is, like, if I change it, you know, like Metallica did in Load, for example, and everybody was hate them for example you know yeah exactly yeah um if i like it you know it's okay that's that's the thing if i like it you know it's fine with me so maybe one day i will change and i will play a four-piece kit and i will play jazz or you know whatever you know if i'm happy it's cool if um if i try to stick to what people want you know for me it's uh for me that's a sellout to be honest you know not yeah not play for example like um uh, like a different style, and people will be like, "Oh, this is sellout." You know, this is not extreme anymore. You know, blah blah blah. But uh, for me, do the same for the crowd. You know, that's a real sellout. You know, I want to do whatever I want to do, and this is why I play music. Right? Yeah. No, I hear you. Well, I wanted to get your opinion um, on triggers and drums because we had a couple of our listeners ask questions on what our opinion is on drums in uh, in, in in metal. Um, I believe you use triggers. What's your opinion on on triggers and a kind of is there a place where it can become laziness with them, or or what do you think about them? That's a good question. I think that's uh, that's like a two hour answer, but <laughs> I'm gonna try to make it short. Um, well, the bass drum, okay, it's a big drum with a lot of moving air inside. So if you don't use triggers and you want that clicky sound, and you know, like you want this um, like, um, no dynamics, and you want the kick like up front, you know, you have you have to use a lot of uh, gates and compression. Your compression, you know, like all this stuff, which for me, this is a form of triggering anyways. So I see people watching like bands, like uh, I don't want to say names, but big bands that use no triggers, but they, they have a sound engineer which uses shit loads of gates and compressions, like <laughs> all this stuff. And they're like, he's not triggering, but this is even worse. They don't get it, you know? Mm. So for music, for, for death metal music, we want the crowd to get the kick drums, you know, like up front. Like, feel the kick drums very well. Yeah, yeah, and that's the best part. super fast. So that's impossible. That's impossible. Nobody can do that. Nobody can do that. Above, like, 190 or something BPM, there is no way. There is no way. So we have to use triggers. Uh, also, my guitar player, when he picks 
when they pick actually the two, uh, when they pick 16 notes, they, they got to have like some, a, a clean sample. Okay. To follow me. So we all, you know, we, we all together. So I think it's a necessary thing. Um, it is true that sometimes it makes some drummers a little bit lazy and they, they're tapping the kicks, you know, mm -hmm. and they sound like very intensive. And when you, when you watch them, you know, playing, you're like, is this all, you know, I'm like, oh man, this is, you know, I, I don't like this. Uh, I had this, I had this as well. But uh, the reality is like um, the, the, the music is very, very extreme. It's super fast. There is no other way to make it happen, you know. So, and, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you got to hit the trigger anyways. I mean, you got to play the kick drum. You got to hit the kick drum to get the sample anyway. So it's, it's not that cheating, you know. Sometimes maybe makes a few drummers lazy, but uh, not all of them, you know. It's just, I think, you know, sometimes. So it kind of, yeah, it depends more on the drummer and their skill. You could go either way yes. with it. Uh, well, it, yes, you can obviously, but when you go live, people will see you. You know, if, if they see yeah. like, a, and this is why many drummers get these uh, tapper comments. You know, they're like, "Oh man, you know, this guy is a tapper." Blah blah blah. He's tapping, uh, and you know, okay. there's so much, so many bad talks on either, and you know, it's it's insane. Um, but like I said, I think we we give them uh, the chance to say it anyways because some of us. We'll play like super soft. Like, again, it's super fast music, so I, I don't think I don't I'm, I don't know any other way to make it happen. And you know, like get the kick drums up front, you know, with uh, natural kicks, anyways. Sure, sure. Yeah, and oh, also, sorry to interrupt again. It's also a matter of the style. For example, I, I see many black metal guys like triggering toms and snares, like everything. But it fits the music, you know. Oh right, yeah. If true. If, if one black metal band asked me to join them, and you know, like. Uh, record the album and you know whatever and they're like a kind of like a demo borgir style you know black metal i would definitely trigger everything because it fits mm -hmm. the style so that's another aspect as well no i like that that actually that clears it up quite a bit for me mm -hmm. um, that's just a very popular question you'll see online or people trashing drummers just for using triggers in general so i just wanted to get a different uh someone with some uh, reputable information on that one well uh, can they do better <laughs> If somebody can do better, okay. If you can play 260 with natural kicks, I mean, I can do it. I can hear my kicks when I play 260. I can hear them on stage. But the problem is, like, you will never hear them, on, you know, when, when you're in the crowd and we play live, you will never get them up front the way you get them with triggers. So I, I don't like triggers anyways uh, myself. Uh, I don't like, uh, like, uh, the, all these electronic stuff, you know, because we, we play a very natural instrument. But... Uh, it's necessary, you know? I mean, uh, a distortion pedal on, on the guitar player, it's the same thing, actually. Right. That's a good point. Yes, because then you get dynamics and you hear, like, can you imagine a band playing, like, super fast 60 notes with no distortion? <laughs> right. It's going to be like a... Rrr, rrr, right. you know? It's going to sound, yeah. like, stupid, you know? So it's yeah. kind of the same thing. Yeah, that makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. Um, you know, another thing, you, I noticed you do a ton of, uh, well, a good amount of session work with other bands. Yeah. Um, so, you know, how do you approach that? Do you, is that a challenge going in and working with a band that kind of has a different sound um, than what you're used to? Or is that just kind of like a fun part of it to change things up? Actually, um, it sounds like a job. Like, for example, when I'm here, I get my own studio. I can record for other bands and, you know, make some money. But that's not the case. Otherwise, you know, I will, I will play, you know, for five bands every month. Uh, I try to play for bands that um, will give me something different than, you know, my solo project, for example, or Nile will give me, you know, so I, I have a chance to work for um, hard rock bands and speed metal bands, some uh, more like uh, dancey death metal stuff, you know, so every time I hear something different and nice, of course, you know, I'm like, okay, yes, of course, you know, I want to do this. And uh, we talk with the band and, you know, we figure out everything. And um, I try to challenge myself and get into this position, you know, I think one of the most extreme stuff I did was... Um, the album uh, for the band Out Loud. I don't know if you know mm. this band. It's a, no. it's, a, it's a Greek band, uh, like a hard rock like or classic metal stuff, you, you could say as well. Okay. But I try to make myself sound like, like a hard rock drummer, you know? You know, with that fat snare and, you know, like all my, my fast yeah. um, fast beats were like uh, kind of like on the upbeat. And, but anyways, you know, like some, some uh, you know, a few details that I really want to, you know, touch, you know, playing with a, with a band, something like really different. So, of course, it is a job, obviously, you know, of course, I make a living out of, uh, you know, uh, recording for other bands, but uh, I try to pick up the bands and uh, play like different style bands, you know, I mean, you will never know, except one session, actually, which was a great band from Italy, the name is Ade, 
Yeah, I'm familiar uh, with that. You will never hear me playing a- any other band and like uh, like close to Nile stuff or my stuff, you know? Sure, sure. So it, it is a personal challenge and uh, some fun times for me. Yeah, no, that's cool. I always like to hear, a, you know, a, a drummer or someone in a, in a different environment just to hear what they bring to the table. Yeah. What, um, for all your projects, your solo stuff, everything, um, you know, I'll probably play a couple songs um, on this episode. What are a couple that you're most proud of that you know that you would want a listener to to kind of hear what you have? We're talking about Nile songs or you know, anything, um, really. If it's just something that anything. some tracks oh, that you man. are really proud of. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's a tough question. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'm I'm proud for uh, everything we did with Nile. Actually, I'm proud for uh, pretty much everything I've done so far because I I always try to pick up like very carefully what I want to play. But uh, mostly, I think uh, is my band. You know, Nile. Yeah. Because you know we're 12 years together, and you know we worked our asses off. You know, all these years, and uh, we've been through very rough times, and we still keep going. Uh, the latest album is uh, very strong. We worked very, very hard for this one. And also, I'm very proud for my solo album as well. Yeah, I, you know, I hadn't even heard of that, and I've been, I've been listening to it a lot lately, and I've been really impressed. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's, that's not a band, actually. That's Yeah, your uh, solo a, project. Yeah, it was a personal thing. You know, I, just, I wrote some songs and released them on, uh, on my um, drum DVDs, and people started to ask me about them. So I'm like, okay, let's do an album, you know? So I... I um, finish this album and um i'm it's all me you know playing all the instruments so that's something like uh, I'm, I'm very very proud for it so i would say mostly yeah everything from nile or my solo project is uh what really uh, represents what i what i'm feeling and uh, doing you know right sure um off the solo album are you do you have any plans to do that again or is that a kind of a one-time thing Actually, I have a contract for another album with Season of Mist. Yeah, so I'm already writing uh, the new album, which I probably plan to record uh, around December. You know, start recording drums and everything. Uh, it's a it's a really fun process for me. You know, I take it like um, slowly. You know, track guitars, you know, and bass and everything, and one thing each time. You know, and just try to enjoy it because I do it myself. So it's something very unique because I have 100% control of everything and, um, you know, a vision which, you know, comes uh, my way. You know, I, I make everything uh, the way I want. Yeah. Um, it's not an ego thing. I, I, I hope you, you take it, you know, you, uh, you understand what I'm saying. It's, it's, like a, it's like a fun project. That's all. Like an art type of thing just to kind of give your own uh, ideas out there. Exactly. Yeah. You have something in your mind. You're like, okay, I want to make it sound like this. And, you know, you get closer and closer and closer. Sometimes maybe it comes different. But if you have a band, you know, somebody will propose something differently and then a different song comes out. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> Do I like this? You know, most times you like this, which is great. But um, this, is, uh, this is all like uh, moving to one vision. So, yes, there is a, there is a new album coming um, next year. That's awesome. And uh, really looking forward to, uh, for the recordings. This is the most fun part for me, you know? Do, are you ever going to try doing any of it live? Um, the, there, is, um, there are some thoughts about it, you know? I mean, I do play the songs on clinics and stuff, you know? Like every time I do clinics, people ask him for songs. So, yes, I jam with the songs and I, I always got them with me. But um, I had this idea, you know, maybe hire a drummer and uh, go out <laughs> as a guitar player and sing it. Oh, that'd be different. Yes, that'll be that'll be real fun, you know. That'll be the real fun. So maybe do something uh, like a one thing, you know, maybe like a short tour or something, and uh, go out there as a guitar player and singer. That'll be that'll be really fun. And actually, I know the drummer. I got the drummer already. Can you say who it is? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. But I got I got this guy is amazing. You know, he's yeah. uh, he's one of us. You know, like. Uh, He's pushing it, so I really like this drama. Yeah, that would be a, that would be awesome. Um, you know, I, with that too, you know, do you ever since you can play guitar? I didn't realize, you know, we had the vocals and all of that. Do you ever bring any of that to the table with Nile, or do you stick mainly just with the drums? The guys asked me many, many times, you know, to bring some uh, riffs and stuff to the table, but um, to be honest, I never did it uh, out of respect for the band because you know my guitar guitar playing is like the, the level of my guitar playing is really low compared to Nile. Mm-hmm. I mean, Nile is really, really pushing it. Um, I mean, if you see uh, Carl and Dallas on their personal life every day, they have like practice time. Mm. I mean, if you're at that level and you practice every day, there is no way the drummer will bring something. You'll be like, oh man, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, just let me let me just say that, you know, I, I don't want to bring them in a, in a tough position because, you know, if I say I got this song, blah, 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 you know, they, they will, you know, they will listen to it and they will try to make it, make it work. 
because you know we're together for so many years but uh i don't think the level is there so out of respect for the band i never did it so far i hear you i hear I you. do though a lot of um arrangements you know i always propose stuff and we change stuff and you know everybody's listening and you know i i do musical stuff but not bring guitar riffs it's a it's a very sensitive thing for me you know right right no that's cool i mean because you can tell you've got the skill the songwriting skill just based off the solo material so i think that would be a good at least uh, aspect of the band that you guys can kind of all chip in at least on that aspect. I think yeah, I think it works great, but uh, the guitar the guitar level the guitar playing level is very low. So sure, let's sure. let's keep it this way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I I, I hear you. Um, yeah. I think uh, that was about it. I was going to ask one other question I, that yeah. I kind of had forgotten about. Um, I don't even know if you were there for that whole situation in Russia that happened with uh, with Carl and the guy uh, the guys from Belfagor and everything. Oh yeah, that, <laughs> that was, was a crazy situation. Were you there for that one? That was that was insane. Uh, first, let me say the Russian crowd is one of the best in the world. Done, like hands down, these guys are amazing. You know, we had a, we always have a great time there. You know, that was uh, the second time for me in Russia. Yeah, and uh, we really, really, really enjoyed. It. Now the problem was like uh, some. Um, orthodox activists you know or something you know some um one of those w- weird things you know i'm not yeah. i'm not against religion or f- any any style of religion you know for me for, i'm i'm really a neutral you know sure. on this stuff and um I, I don't really go against everything but for me if you're like a fanatic uh orthodox or a satanist you know it's it's weird already you know Sure. So it's it's very stupid. So these guys were on the orthodox side, but very fanatics, and um, they obviously had problems with uh, Belfagor, you know, Helmut, um, the the singer mainly. So they uh, attacked us, you know, in uh, at the airport, and I was actually the the very last guy, you know, uh, dragging some guitars and cymbals and all the stuff. So when I when I went out from the airport, you know, I I saw people spitting each other, and I was yeah. like. What the hell is going on? You know, so I'm. If you see the video, you will see me like, what's going on? You know, I'm <laughs> trying to ask him. You know, ask people. So I think uh, it was um, it was unnecessary. You know, it was very very stupid. And um, Belfagor definitely didn't you know didn't deserve this stuff. And uh, the only thing that happened, obviously, it wasn't our problem because you know we we're not talking about uh, Satan. You know, in our music, but. Um, we support Belfagor, you know. We support our brothers, you know. They're, we we tour with them uh, many years. We know they they're great musicians, and you know they they just play music, and people want to want to listen to Belfagor. They wanted to see Belfagor, so we we tried to support them. That was it. That was it, you know. And um, I think uh, it was really funny, you know. Then we heard we were on the news on uh, TV in Russia, you know. It was mm. uh, it got too big, you know, for no reason. But uh, either way, we got away, and um, unfortunately, Belfagor had to cancel four shows. Wow. So they only played in uh, Moscow, and um, the funny thing is that they played with uh, somebody mute their, their vocals oh my without gosh. them knowing. So they, they were playing, and they were, you know, they, they were thinking, you know, oh, we do the show, you know, and then they, they got, you know, to the crowd, they talked to the crowd, and it was like, why didn't they have vocals? <laughs> oh, my gosh. It was it was really bad for them. It was really hard for us as well. But um, you know things happen, and um, unfortunately, Russia. I think Cannibal Corpse had it as well, and definitely Behemoth. Uh, you know, we'll get better soon. I hope. Yeah, sure. That's a pain, but uh, so yeah. at least it didn't escalate any worse than that or anything. No, no, no. They just uh, there were there were people outside the clubs, uh, you know, like protesting and uh, doing stuff. But uh, we didn't got our asses kicked. Or anything. sure, sure. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, we're fine. And that's funny because I'm a Christian Orthodox too. You know, I'm I'm from Greece, so yeah. my passport says Christian Orthodox, which is <laughs> so I could be like, no, not not me, not me. Yeah. <laughs> Don't kick me. <laughs> right, 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 right. No, no, we all got it the same. And um, you know, like I said, you know, Russian crowd is the best, and we will go there again. I hope things will will get better, but uh, it is what it is. Sure. No. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, man. Well, listen. I uh, really want to thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. Thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks so much, man. Thanks so much. Man.